Judge Penny Wolfgang, Phil Arno returns to host this week when he welcomes some really special guests to remember a broadcast legend. I'll be watching, and you should too. Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Phil Arno. If you're a human, and let's hope most of you watching right now are of that persuasion, then your life has had its share of laughs and tears. That's just part of the human experience. And if we're lucky and we try real hard, hopefully we end up having more of the fun stuff. But in the end, how do we gauge the life well lived? What's the point of this journey we're all taking along this path? Well, for those of us that take the time once in a while to ponder this abstruse logic, I guess the answer becomes a personal opinion. I'd like to think that it's not how much joy someone has during their time on this planet that makes a good life. Instead, I think we can measure the quality of one's life by the amount of joy that they've given to those they've touched along their journey. Recently, one of Buffalo's native sons passed away, a radio icon, if you will, a man whose name many of our audience members may re recognize. And by the above standard, it's very safe to say that the great Tommy Shannon, who gave so much joy, so many smiles to so many along his journey, had a life very well lived. On this big picture, we will remember Tommy Shannon and pay tribute to the many smiles he brought to us in what seems to be such a warm, fun time to remember. Some of our audience can't imagine what it was like to lay on a hot, sandy beach at Shirkston, listening to the waves and the crowd and, and, and of course, the music, when radio was so important to a whole generation before computers and before the internet and before cell phones, no podcasts, just radio. But it wasn't just the music. It was personality. Watch now a short video put together by our friend Art Gulo honoring Tommy. Booker T and the MGs, the Memphis group, and that's time is tight at 103 at WNIC. Detroit reunion weekend, having a great deal of fun. This is Tom Shannon until 3 o'clock this afternoon. We talked a little bit about Buffalo. Yes. That's where you are right now. Right, Buffalo, New York, which is my hometown, and I think Jim and I covered a bit of that and the fact that uh, I was born there and started in radio there for a number of years. And uh, as a matter of fact, the station I started with, which is much like CKLW, a 50,000-watt station, it was, its call letters are and uh, were and still are WKBW, and it originally was a religious-oriented station, well-known Bible word, I think, is what it originally stood for. In any case, it's a powerhouse, 50,000 watts. I uh, actually began and made my career there. The beginnings of it came to Detroit, CKLW, Windsor, Detroit, in about 1964. And, and Buffalo is a good town that way. It's much like Detroit in a lot of ways. Matter of fact, we get your weather as it comes down the road through Canada and right over again. So there's a lot of correlation there, and I, I don't know if that fills in the blanks a little bit, but uh, that's some of what I do back there. Wait a minute. Wait, you don't work here anymore? I didn't. I thought you were on vacation. Oh, you thought I was on vacation. Yeah, what they put a this? talk show in while I was away. And I, <laughs> so I mean, it wasn't exactly a choice I, I wanted to make at that moment, but uh -huh. I mean, I was forced into it, you see. <laughs> From, you know, I, no, this is the second time around here for me. That's right. I, right. Okay. Because so I actually was more than 25 at this so station. You so started, you started here, and then you left, and then I came in. No, no, I didn't leave. I was fired. Boy, you're As a really matter of fact, <laughs> let me look down the list here. I don't think there's anybody here that totally left voluntarily at one point or other. But anyway, we, we have good memories. with well, some bad moments, too, I suppose, depending on who was running the place. You know, no, I think this is really, seriously, <laughs> broadcasters out there or people who are thinking of getting into this industry or people who just listen to the radio, uh, somewhere in your life, you're going to get fired. Probably. Tom Shannon Show. I think we can put Danny in there. Let's put Danny in there with the show. I know I can move your fanny. No, not to my right. knowledge. Oh. But if they did, send money to Tom. That's right. <laughs> hey, we've got some great memories here all weekend long on the weekend reunion. I'm Dan Neverth, and we'll be hosting this with all of the big guys. The anniversary reunion. And Danny, congratulations. Thank you, Joan. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled. I'm delighted. This is great. I want you to meet a couple of the other guys here because we're all big fans of yours, I hope. Uh, we are. We Tommy are. Shannon, who's on the radio in Detroit. Tommy. Hi, Joan. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine, if you remember. Yeah, you know, sure. It's really Joan. Yeah. What? <laughs> what is, it? Was it, is this Rachel Little? Well, I don't know. I, all I can tell you is you did, you, did, you did a television show for me in Denver, Colorado. You had a book out. I can't remember the name of it now. It was quite a while ago. 
It was a long while ago, 72, 73, something hey, like that. Hey, you're talking about my little baby book. That's what it was. It was the baby book. Yeah, how are you? Well, I'm fine. We haven't talked in so long. How's the family? <laughs> the family's fine, thank you. <laughs> I did read this. I really did. And that's why I meant to say. And I said, I'm going to see Rod Roddy. On comes the show. I see Bob Barker. And, and Rod is already reading because I can hear his voice. And you'll get a brand new, uh, whatever the line a is. A new car. Right. Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. And then that's he said, he said Rod, uh, Susie wants to know what kind of car is it? And the camera flashes over. And you said it's, it's a... It's a new car, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> we never get away used cars. <laughs> I knew I was safe. And do you know something? You look better. And it's not that we're not playing the, the favorite game of let's uh, one up one another. You look terrific. You really do. I think everybody agrees. You Thank look you very sensational. Much. I, we got some pictures here you don't want to see. No, you're right. I don't, I, I, <laughs> Welcome back to Buffalo. Buffalo. Thank you. It's nice to be here. I'm very excited to be here. It snowed. I, used to, uh, I, I ruined one of his greatest lines, which was uh, there is something living in Tom Shannon's hair. Do you remember that old story? I, I think your wife told me that. He's back on it again, isn't he? <laughs> Somebody play Wild Weekend. <laughs> Tell Paul Schaefer I love him and thank you for playing Wild Weekend. I get residuals still every time he does a little book. Does he do a break when he comes does out? Does he really? Casey Kasem told me this and so did Mark Elliott. And I don't know if that name is as well known as Casey Kasem. Both have told me at one time or another, why don't you come to California? This is early on in the career. Why don't you come to California? Why don't you come to California because you can make a ton of money. And I said, sure, sure. He said, I'm doing B pictures and some. I get the leftovers. So I forget who the big announcer was. He said, I make almost a million dollars a year. This is Casey Kasem years ago. He's making, what, four million now? Yeah. What about what about the next one that comes along? Mark Elliott said, I pick up Casey's droppings and I get six hundred thousand a year. Now we want to ask you, Rod, whose droppings are you picking up and can we borrow fifty thousand? <laughs> he dropped soap, I picked it up. <laughs> this is Tom Shannon. We're having a great deal of fun here at the Buffalo KB Dan Nevereth reunion. And we're getting ready for our big finish, so don't you dare go away. And now joining me to remember more about Tommy are two guys who were there when Tommy was born. They taught Tommy everything he knows about <laughs> broadcasting. And in fact, they learned about radio from a guy by the name of Marconi. First, via Zoom from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, who will soon be performing live at Pink's in Los Angeles, radio icon himself, <laughs> Joey Reynolds. And when Joey asked me who else we can talk, get to talk about the great Tommy Shannon, I said, there's only one man who can talk about Tommy Shannon, the Fanny Man can. And here in the studio, the Fanny Man himself, the senior, Danny Never, or maybe I should say, Danny Never Senior. <laughs> Wait a second. Oh, hold on, hold on. You said we were there when he was born? Hey, yeah, Come yeah, on. yeah. And Marconi <laughs> gives Tommy, blessings Tommy and to. Joey uh, are both like one year younger than uh, me. Yeah, yeah. It would have been pretty right. interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I'll okay. let you guys argue about that. All right. Okay. So, Tommy Shannon. Okay, let me say this about Tommy before we get started. Tommy was a heartthrob with every woman of a certain age in Western New York, okay? And if they're watching this now and they are a woman of a certain age, they were in love with him, okay? Because he had a whole lot going for him. He made a lot of appearances. They knew what he looked like. He had a Corvette, okay? He had a radio show. <laughs> and he had long blonde hair. And he was so much better looking than Joey Reynolds and myself, okay? We were, you know, well, okay. We don't want to put Joey in there because obviously he doesn't even belong in that rating period. But anyway, that was, that was a secret. But beyond that, he was a gentleman. He really, he really was a gentleman. Unlike some of the other people we know. But Yeah, well, I'm not a gentleman, and Joey certainly <laughs> <laughs> Certainly he's not a gentleman. Anybody who would do an interview with a bird on his shoulder, there's something, there's something missing up here, okay? So we'll, we'll probably see that bird in a little while. Yeah, I, Joey, the bird. It's a bird man. Okay. All right, now. now Hello, there's are you there, lot. Joey? Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Is that a technical term? Yes or no? Yeah, I think so, yes, we can hear you. Okay, Where did the good. bird go? Right. I, I can't see the bird. But anyway, go ahead. You're on live. I'm in the bird. I'm, <laughs> I'm in the bird's cage. The bird uh -huh. is, is. I'm not. The bird is not visiting me. I'm visiting the bird. You got it. Be careful. Okay, anyway, you, yes. Point, okay. Never mind. <laughs> the point of the, this whole thing is that uh, Tommy Shannon. A lot of this gets uh, gets forgotten. And you know, we it's uh, 
we don't want to be terribly forgotten about Tommy. Yes, he was a hunk. And, and the reason he was a, a big star was probably because he was the star of Bandstand. He did a TV show, and it was around the time that Dick Clark, who was a, a very clean-cut-looking guy, was on television on the uh, Philadelphia, and then, of course, Network. But Tommy was the Buffalo version of that. But before that, way before that, there was a guy named Hernando. And uh, we got to bring him into the picture here, Phil Todero. Now, Hernando had a show called Hernando's Hideaway. And he's the guy that actually discovered Tommy because Tommy was a student at Buffalo State. And uh, he used to hang around Hernando's studio. Now, Hernando was on WGR at the time. I think Danny's visited there a couple of times. And uh, on the television side, uh, I was on Pat Fagan's dance party on Saturday afternoon. I was about 13 years old. And the other guy before him, now, Danny, this is going to be a, a memory uh, jogger for you, is Bob Glacey. But before that was Bob Wells, who had the show from the Delwood Ballroom every Saturday called High Teen. And so we all have that background of, uh, of, of hanging around these guys who are role models for us whether well, it was Hernando or the Hound Dog. Now, what, the Hound what was Dog, it? wait a minute. Joe, Joey, what was, what was it about, about Tommy, other than his looks, what was it, his personality, you know, as contrasted well, he was, with he you learned, guys? He learned, he learned I was, uh, that's what I was telling you, he learned from Hernando. Hernando was the personality, not Tommy. Hernando <laughs> was a guy on the air who, had a, who had, was a very casual, talking, interesting person. And Tommy hung around with him and learned very well from him and he applied that and Hernando sponsored him and, and put him uh, on the map that's how now, it started. now let's face it Danny when we got into radio it was to meet girls right mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I mean that's that was the, the the motivating factor and Tommy was the most successful guy back then oh, no with question. what we all wanted to do right well <clears throat> There were other guys who were very successful, too, at the radio station at WKBW before Tommy and then after Tommy joined them and before we joined the station and worked with Tommy. Uh, we had Dick Biondi, of course, and we had uh, Russ the Moose, Syracuse, and a whole bunch of people like that. But the thing with Tommy was he wasn't like Joey. He wasn't funny, okay? And he wasn't like me. He wasn't goofy, doing all kinds of wacky stuff. But, but he had this sincerity about him, and people, people gravitated to that. They, they saw him. Like I said, he's a real gentleman, okay? Now, let me give you an example. A bunch of broadcasters, former broadcasters, some who are still in the business, some are on the fringes of the business, and these are older guys and women. We get together maybe once a month, and we have breakfast or lunch in western New York. Well, Tommy would come in to see his daughter, who lives in Buffalo, and he'd come in once a year. This was like the most exciting thing that happened to these other people who are broadcasters. You know, it's like, <laughs> Tommy's coming next month. Tommy's going to be here. And I was going to phone call. Did you hear that Tommy's going to be Yeah, I know he's going to be here. It got to the point where my late beloved wife would say to me, what's the big deal with Tommy Shannon? Okay, nobody gets excited about you when you go to the meeting. <laughs> so, and that's exactly the way it was. Everybody who ever came in to his realm, anybody who ever had any dealings with him, they, they realized, you know, that not only was he a gentleman, but he was a great businessman, too. He, uh, he had a record, I believe it was called Wild Weekend, that sold a whole bunch of copies. And then he had a recording studio. So Joey and I recorded our hit record, Rats in My Room. Now, <clears throat> I got to tell you about Rats in My Room. We had to become BMI songwriters, OK? So at the time, there was a guy doing Greyhound commercials. And he was not an actor, but he looked like a bus driver. And at the end of the commercial, he would lean out the window and say, and leave the driving to us. And then I read a story about him in the paper. He made $50,000 a year residuals from just doing that, OK? So as a BMI songwriter, I get my first check. And it was for $50. And I'm thinking, $50 every month for the rest of my life? This is great. This is wonderful. I can't wait till the next month. Run out to the mailbox, 
there's my check from BMI, and it said it was for $30. And a note with it saying, <laughs> until the account equals 50, we won't be sending you any more checks. That was it. Total, $80, OK? Tommy did considerably better with his song. With Wild Weekend. With yes. Wild Weekend. Well, oh, yeah. you, you got to know, uh, first of all, I was partners with Tommy. We owned the studio together. It was called Empire Sound. And, uh, and we, we did have hit records out of there, and we recorded uh, uh, Tony Gallo, if you recall, and The Road. Uh, I, I did in New York. I did that in New York. I produced that record. But, you know, uh, we, had a, we had the studio with uh, uh, Tony DiMaria and uh, Carl Cisco. You remember these names? And in, the, and in that studio business, we did very well. We had a couple of local hits, and then what we did was... Tommy and Danny and I brought Dick Clark's caravan to Crystal Beach. And we didn't think anybody was going to show up for that. We promoted it. Tommy was on the air opposite me. I was on at night on KB. He's on WGR opposite me. So here we are, friends. We're opposite each other on the radio. We own business together. And we got a, a, a tour coming in. And we're promoting it. Dick called me and said, you know, I want to get this tour together. Can We, uh, we need a, a stop between Toronto and Buffalo. So we got him into Crystal Beach, which is Ontario. And uh, as Danny and I were going over the Peace Bridge, there were too many cars and we thought we were going to be late. But meanwhile, we found out there were 10,000 people coming to see our event. And it was uh, so, I mean, so many people, it was oversold and it was sold out. That was Tommy and, and Danny and I. And the money was all being split at the end, but it was in cash. You remember that, Danny? And it was on, on the floor of the box office. And uh, that's when you were crawling. I don't know if you remember that. You were trying to get the money. <laughs> Still wanting the residuals. You never got it. <laughs> no but residuals. Tommy, Tommy was, Tommy was a, uh, an interesting duck because he was bilingual. He loved Spanish ladies. And that's why there was a lineup from Chictawaga all the way to downtown Buffalo to see him when he came to town. Because he had, he, had he had covered all of his bases with women. Well, he definitely he a, had he a, he definitely had some gravitas, and and it, it, that was something. That. Yep, that was <laughs> it, it. It separated him from a lot of the different types of personalities on the radio. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about Tommy, and if we're really lucky, our, my two guests might talk about their personal knowledge of Marconi himself. Anyway, we'll be right back after this.